The dire wolf was a large extinct canine that lived and dominated the Americas during the late Pleistocene. It is perhaps one of the most well-known of Pleistocene megafauna and one of the most formidable predators of its time. It lived from the late Pleistocene to early Holocene, around 125,000 to 10,000 years ago. I just want to quickly note that these are not dire wolves, not even 1%. They are pretty much just grey wolves. The only difference that I can point out is that they're a bit larger, but overall they're just normal wolves. They just resemble the dire wolves from Game of Thrones, and those are also just regular wolves. This is inaccurate, as real dire wolves were not actually wolves, and they would have looked very different. A study in 2021 suggests that dire wolves belong to their own separate genus, in a scion, and are more closely related to jackals, specifically African jackals, than they were to wolves which are part of the genus known as Canis. Grey wolves share a more closer relation to this than to actual dire wolves. Real dire wolves probably looked more like this than what was created. So yeah, dire wolves are not back from extinction. I was honestly more excited about the really mice than those wolves. That's just my opinion. Anyways, back to the dire wolf. This animal was first described in 1858 and was given the scientific name Canis divus. But as mentioned before, they are now placed in a separate genus, with the scientific name being changed to Enocyon divus. DNA studies in 2021 suggest that dire wolves last shared a common ancestor with wolf like canines around 5.7 million years ago. Two subspecies of dire wolf are recognized A. divus divus and A. Dyrus Goldei, with the former being the larger out of the two. The dire wolf lived throughout the New World and lived in a variety of different habitats, which would have included plains, grasslands, and forested mountain areas in North America. It even lived in the arid savanna and open rainforests of South America. Dire wolves were big dogs, being on average similar to the largest mon wolves in terms of size and weight like the Yukon Wolf and Northwestern Wolf, the largest wolves we have today. The largest dire wolves could weigh between 60 and 75 kilograms, or 130 to 170 pounds, making it 20% larger and heavier than most wolves today. Keep in mind that size and weight would have varied depending on habitat and region. Those found further north tend to be larger. If the dire wolf was still alive today, it would be the largest canine in the world, putting even the largest dog breeds to shame. It had a very similar body plan to Monday wolves, although it was more robust and muscular. The morphological similarities with dire wolves and Monday wolves was likely due to convergent evolution, as both had very similar ecological niches. The skull was very similar to Canis lupus, but its teeth were larger with greater shearing ability. The bite force at the canine tooth was stronger than any modern canine, able to easily bite through bone. These characteristics are thought to be adaptations for preying on large herbivores that lived in North America during the Pleistocene, which would have included horses, pronghorn, ground sloths, bison, and camels. The dire wolf is very well known from fossils, with the largest collection in the world coming from the Ranco La Brea Tarpets, so their morphology is well known. Over 4,000 dire wolf specimens have been obtained from the Labrea tar pits alone. They were likely attracted to the tar by struggling prey animals that ended up getting stuck. The wolves would attempt to scavenge on the carcasses, but would end up getting trapped themselves and then scavenged upon by other predators. The second most abundant animal from the Labrea tar pits was the saber-toothed cat, Smaradon fatalis, or more famously known as the saber-toothed tiger, which would have directly competed with the dire wolf. Like today's wolves, dire wolves were social animals, travelling in large packs of between 12 and 20 individuals or more. These packs would have been led by an alpha male and female, with the rest of the pack consisting of offspring and closely related adults. Living in a pack would have helped them take down large prey, defend carcasses, and compete with other predators, like the saber-toothed cat, which, like the dire wolf, was also a social animal. Group living would have also provided safety for individuals in a pack, especially young, old or sick individuals. How they vocalised is a mystery. 
they probably sounded different to modern-day wolves, as they are not closely related to wolves. Other canines, for example, have different sounding vocalizations. This was likely the same for the dire wolf. With its size, strength, and social behavior, the dire wolf was a formidable predator that could prey on species weighing between 300 and 600 kilograms. The diet of dire wolves would have depended on location, with some being hyper carnivorous, while others had a more diverse diet, like wolves today. The dire wolf was a successful and adaptable animal that shared its habitat with a large number of megafauna, which would have made North America resemble the Serengeti of Africa in terms of wildlife. Herbivores that coexisted and were preyed upon by the dire wolf would have included horses, peccaries, tapirs, various species of deer like the stagamoose, which was basically the American equivalent of the megaloceros or Irish elk, as well as steppe bison, long-horned bison, glyptodonts which were giant armadillos, giant American camels, ground sloths, American mastodon, woolly mammoths, and the giant Colombian mammoth, which were the largest animals around with the Colombian mammoth having a shoulder height of 4 meters and weighing over 13 tons. Other carnivores that lived alongside and competed with the dire wolf would have included the iconic saber-toothed cat, Smaradon, as well as the American cheetah, American lion, and the giant short-faced bear, Arctodocemus, which was the largest terrestrial carnivore in North America at the time, as well as carnivores that are still living today, like coyotes, grey wolves, bobcats, lynxes, cougars, jaguars, American black bears, and grizzly bears. Since dire wolves were still around between 20 and 30,000 years ago, they also coexisted with early Native Americans. Sadly, they didn't tame and domesticate them like grey wolves, rather they just saw them as competition for food and territory, possibly even hunting them out of sport or to reduce their numbers. The dire wolf is sadly no more, as they went extinct during the end of the late Pleistocene. Some studies suggest that the dire wolf may have lived up to the early Holocene, with the most recent remains being around 9,400 to 8,000 years old. The extinction of the dire wolf wasn't due to a single cause, likely a combination of different factors such as climate change, the extinction of its preferred prey and competition with humans. Today, grey wolves take their place as the dominant canine species. They survived likely due to their adaptability and more diverse diet, than the dire wolf, which was more carnivorous and preferred to hunt larger prey. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, you can leave a like. If you like what you see, you can subscribe to this channel if you want. Stay blessed, and I'll see you later.